Hi, welcome to another episode of Global Fusions Tech Tips. My name is Ray Roberts. I'm your host, and today I'm going to show you how to set up your new email accounts that we've set up for you using Microsoft Outlook and your iPhone, so you can access your email wherever you are, on the go or in the office. Okay, let's get started. Global Fusion Tech Tips. Okay, so the first thing we need to do now is we're going to add our new email account to our Microsoft Outlook. So in this example, I'm using Outlook 2010. And when it first starts up, um, you're taken to the Home tab, which is just here on the top left. And you can see all your mail folders, a few different mail accounts here on the left. Now, we're going to add a new one, so it's going to create a new folder. So first of all, we go to the File menu. And once this tab loads up, you'll see straight away the first option is Account Set. Click on account settings. And it pops up a new window. This shows all your current accounts that are set up. I'm going to add a new one, so we're going to click new. I want to choose email account, which is the first option. Then we go next. And then we want to skip this top section, and down the bottom, I want to choose manually configure server settings or additional server types and then go next I'm going to choose internet mail okay so now we put in our name now uh, in this case I'm giving the name of the account so it's easy for me to remember in the email address, which in this case is info at advertise to profit. Now this is going to be your email address at yourdomain.com.au. The account type we want to choose is IMAP. Now the reason for that is IMAP allows you to sync your mail across multiple devices. So if we have our mail set up on our Outlook on our laptop and also on our iPhone or our smartphone, we don't have to worry about not being able to access mail because we downloaded it on our laptop and we can't access it on the iPhone. If you choose IMAP, the server understands you've got multiple devices and it will actually show you which emails you've replied to across all devices. So you can always see all your emails, no matter which device you're on. So the incoming mail server is just mail.yourdomain. So in this case, it's advertise to profit com. Now the outgoing mail server should be the same. You can just copy and paste. However, this depends on your internet service provider, so your broadband connection. In my case, I'm using Vivid, and that's fine. I can use my own outgoing mail servers. But some providers, like Big Pond, um, will actually block port 25, which is the outgoing mail server port, um, to stop people sending spam um, from their home accounts. So in that case, you might have to put mail.bigpond.com in this field if you're with Big Pond. Now, if you're not sure, um, if your ISP requires you to do that, um, there's a list here, which you can also see below this video. Um, and it lists all the ISPs around Australia and what their outgoing mail servers are. Now, if you're with IINet, you can actually log into your account and turn off a setting called port blocking, which will allow you to use your own. If you don't turn that off, you're going to need to use theirs, mail.iinet.net.au. Um, most people seem to be with Big Pond in Australia, so um, most people will use this mail.bigpond.com. In my case, I don't need to do that, so I can put mail.advertisedprofit.com. Your login information has to be your full email address, so info at advertisedprofit again. 
Oh. And then you put in your password. So this password will be assigned to you by one of my team and you'll get those details in the email we send through to you. You want to make sure that you've ticked this box, remember password. And you can hit test if you want to send a test. And this will actually try and log in to the server and then send it an outgoing message. Now, if it fails sending the outgoing message, it means that this outgoing mail server setting could be wrong and you might need to use one of the ISP that I just showed you in that list before. Now if you didn't catch all the ones on the list, they are listed below this video. Now you just click next and it's going to automatically test again. Okay, so once it passes that test, just hit close and it'll say congratulations, you've successfully entered all the information you require click finish and then you'll see your new account is now added to the bottom of the list and if we close this window you'll also see that on the left hand side it's now going to update and your new mail folder has been added here on the left and it'll start downloading the emails now let's set it up as you see they're coming down so let me show you now how to set it up on your iPhone. So there's our two test messages that came through. And now we're going to set it up on the iPhone. So let me just share my iPhone screen. Okay, so here is my iPhone. And the first thing I need to do is click on settings. And then you need to scroll down and select mail, contacts, and calendars. And this shows all your current mail accounts. So we want to actually click on add account to add a new one. And the one you want to choose is other. Down the bottom. Then we want to say add mail account, the first option. Okay, again, we want to put in what, what name it is. You want to put in your full email address. So in this case, once again, it's info at So that's going to be whatever you've been assigned. Again, the password is going to be whatever our team has assigned to you. Now, you've got two options here. Again, POP and IMAP. We want to make sure that IMAP is selected. Okay, on the incoming mail server, once again, it's mail. Dot, and then your domain name. Username is your full email address. Password it should have remembered be from before. If not, re-enter it again. So now the outgoing mail server. Now, um, again, we have the similar issue with the ISPs, depending on who your provider is. You can see at the top, mine's Telstra. So I need to use the Telstra mail server. But the easiest thing to do is try it first with your own. So put in your own mail server, which again is... Put in your full email address. Username. 
then your password. Okay, and then you can click next and it will start verifying the account. Now this can take a few minutes um, and what this does is it's trying to connect to the server and make sure it can do everything it needs to do to send and receive mail. Now um, if you've got an iPad you want to set it up it's exactly the same procedure as doing it on your iPhone. Okay, so now it says I cannot connect using SSL. Do you want to try without using SSL? And the answer is yes. So our mail server is not going to use SSL. Um, and it's going to continue verifying. So once again, you want to choose to try without SSL. So in this case, the answer was yes. Now, as you can see at the top of the screen here, the little Telstra icon, and next to that, it shows that I'm actually connected to Wi-Fi. Um, so that means this should happen a bit faster for me than if I was just on uh, 3G or 4G. Um, now it's trying to connect to the server and check that it can connect to both the incoming mail server and the outgoing mail server. If I was only connected to 3G it might give us an error with the outgoing mail server um, because I'm with Telstra they actually block port 25 as we said before and I'll need to use their outgoing mail server while I'm connected to the 3G network. And this sometimes gets a bit confusing for some customers when while they're connected to Wi-Fi, they've set it up to use their own incoming and their own outgoing mail server and they can send mail fine. But as soon as they're away from their office and not connected to Wi-Fi, all of a sudden they can't send mail. And that's because um, companies like Telstra and Vodafone and even Optus now are blocking port 25 over the mobile network and you'll actually need to use their outgoing mail server. So once this is finished verifying, I'll show you how to change the settings to use your ISP and uh, your mobile phone carrier's outgoing mail server. Okay, so again it's asking us, cannot connect using SSL, we want to say Yes, we'll try without SSL. Okay, so now that that's done, um, you can see we've got the option do we want to sync our mail? That's default is on and notes. And we're going to go yes and click save. And now it's adding account. The account's been added. And you can see it's now showing here at the bottom of my list. Now, um, to change the outgoing mail server to use that of your mobile network carrier, if you just click on the mail account again, okay, and then click on the actual account name in the top section, and then you want to scroll down and you see outgoing mail server and click that. And then primary server it's saying, do you want to use yours? Now that's not going to work for me because I'm with Telstra when I'm connected to 3G or 4G because they're going to block it. So what I'm going to do is select that and switch it to server to off and click done. And then I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to add the big pond one. So I want to go to add server. And in here, I want to type in mail. Com. Okay. Now, some uh, um, mobile phone carriers will actually ask you to enter in your username and password, but in this case, we won't need to. So we just click save. And my account's verified, and we're all done.
So now we can actually go back, click on the mail icon, click the home button first, click on the mail icon, see my new mail account has been added. I can click on it and it'll start downloading all the emails. So that's it. Pretty simple. Same process applies on your iPad. Um, that's it. If you've got any questions, um, you can visit us at support.globalfusion.com.au. Thank you and have an awesome day.